Welcome to chapter 8.3 on Lenz's Law. We're following the Walding textbook that follows the Queensland Year 12 Unit 3 Physics Syllabus. And today we'll uh, get into some stuff around Lenz's Law. You may have to find yourself pausing this video a few bit and rewinding it to get the concepts right because some of it does seem a little bit counterintuitive. Okay, this video here I set your last lesson to have a watch. It's a good introduction to this section because it gives you a nice idea about what uh, Lenz's Law is all about. I do recommend watching that video as well because it complements this nicely. So today's task, we're going to look at uh, Faraday's Law and Lenz's Law. We're going to look at how um, wires moving in magnetic fields induce currents and vice versa. So we'll be able to describe what Lenz's Law is and the conservation of energy. Okay, And essentially, this little diagram here pretty much sums it up. Remember our little symbol phi, as in the change in uh, magnetic flux. As we change it, we destroy it and so on. It's a bit weird. There's a nice video here I recommend you check out, written done by the uh, author of the textbook, Walding, which gives a good demo about how we can show Lenz's law. Essentially what he does is he, he gets a, a pipe and gets a little magnet and drops it down the pipe but the pipe is made of aluminium, so it's not magnetic. However, when the magnet is dropped down and falls through it, the magnetic field moving through the pipe generates a current in the pipe, which generates a magnetic field, which opposes this downward velocity of the magnet. And you see the magnet fall very, very slowly because the pipe that is not magnetic has an induced magnetic field to oppose the motion of the magnet falling through it. Let's have a look at how this works. So when we talk about electromagnetic induction, recall that when a magnet is inserted into a coil, it induces a current to flow in one direction. Yeah, not these guys. All right. One direction in the coil, in the wires. So a magnet going through a coil such as a solenoid, the current will flow in one direction. And we have a hand rule for that one. You may have to look back at that one. That's the one where we had sort of the thumb and your fingers wrapping around like that. And your fingers were the magnetic field, uh, sorry, the current through the solenoid. And your thumb was pointing in the direction of north of the solenoid. You may recall that one. So current flowing around that way and the thumb pointed towards north of the solenoid. So that's what we're sort of discussing today. Now, point two here, when the magnet is oscillated, the current will flow in one way or another. Sorry about the other uh, bad reference to another One Direction song. I know you guys love it. But what I'm saying is you move the magnet in and out of the solenoid, and you can show that the current flows in opposite directions. And what we look at with Lenz's Law is how do we know which way it starts going? So this sort of scenario is what I'm talking about. Here's our magnet here moving up and down inside the solenoid and we can show over here that the um, the current flows in different directions in the solenoid in one instance it'll flow sort of that way in the wire and then it'll flow that way and Lenz's law shows us how to work out which way it's going to go here's the same sort of thing but showing a bit differently solenoids are uh, these wires here we have a uh, magnet that moves in in this direction. That's the, sort of the, the motion, the velocity of it's moving in. And it's going to induce a magnetic field. And essentially what it's going to do is oppose what's happening here. If that's here, this is sort of, it's inside there, I can't really show you. There's the north there and there's the south there. It's almost like the um, north field of the solenoid ends up here and the south ends up here when it's going in. And the opposite happens when it's going out. So anyway, we're calling, talking about Lenz's Law. We're not talking about little uh, camera lenses. We're talking about another dead white guy. He was part of the Russian Empire when he was born in the early 1800s. He didn't just discover Lenz's Law. He also looked at, uh, discovered Joule's Law. He discovered it at the same time as Joule's Law, so it's sometimes sort of jointly named for the two of them. But the best thing he's known for is Lenz's Law, this property of magnets moving inside coils of wire. What he notices is that the, um, 
a larger magnet getting pushed into the coil requires more effort than a smaller magnet. So hence that effort that you're putting in is energy you're putting in, and that gives you current. And what he sort of discovered was that nature's not giving anything for free. It's sort of how he summarized it. The fact that you're pushing a magnet into a coil of wire and you feel some resistance to do it shows you that you've got to oppose something. And what you're actually opposing is the induced magnetic field. So I'll summarize it in this slide here. The induced current, as when you push a magnet into a coil, it will induce a current in the coil. That current induces a magnetic field. So the coil now has its own magnetic field, which interacts with the magnetic field of the original magnet that you're pushing into it. So as a result, the conductor experiences a force opposite to the motion. So your coil of wire ends up becoming a bit like a magnet. So here's your magnet, here's your south pole, there's your north pole, and you push it into that coil of wire. It will induce a current in the wire. That current will then induce a magnetic field in the wire, which opposes, so this becomes a bit like a magnet, and that opposes the original magnet. So what you feel like you're doing is pushing two north poles together. And that's what we mean by this line here. The force will tend to stop the conductor moving. So if a conductor moves through a magnetic field, then it will induce a current through itself so as to set up a force which opposes the motion. And that's just another way of saying it. And here's how we sort of show it diagrammatically. The direction of the induced current is such as to oppose the motion producing it. And you can see we have our north pole here. It's going down into our solenoid. It will set up a current which has the north pole there. So in this scenario, we come back to that handle that I spoke about at the start there to know which way the current's actually going to flow. Think of your thumb is the north pole, and you've got your fingers that wrap around like that. I'm clearly not really good at drawing, am I? So there's your hand. So if this is your north pole coming in, you must have a north pole generated here. That's the north on the um, solenoid. So the current, positive current, must be going that way. And that's how we know it works that way. And when it's going out, the opposite's occurring. That's essentially what Lenz's law is. It's kind of a bit counterintuitive, but when you think about it, it sort of makes sense from a conservation of energy point of view. Um, these little challenges I do include from time to time, and I do encourage you to stop and uh, pause the video, have a look at those, and see if you can answer them. So, in electromagnetics, Lenz's law tells us the direction of an induced electric current always opposes the change in circuit or the magnetic field that produces it. And that's just a sort of a, um, a way of saying that if that's the north coming in, you want a field set up in your solenoid to oppose that motion because this magnet moving in is going to generate a current down here. You don't want that current generated for free. So you kind of have to put more effort in to make that current flow. So you feel like you've got two magnets opposing each other. When an induced current flows through the solenoid, the magnetic field produced by the solenoid has a polarity that repels the incoming permanent magnet pole. That is that one. That's the permanent magnet. And I hope we're not feeling like this guy here. Welcome to physics. Um, we should mention that the size of the current depends on the number of turns or the turns per length of your um, solenoid, as well as What's B? Have a think about that. B is the magnetic field, and V is velocity. So it depends on how many turns have I got here, how strong is this magnet, and what size is the velocity that's going in. This is the hand rule I keep referring to to work out where the North Pole's got to be. And if you look at this little picture down here, that kind of models what's going on in this example up the top here. All right, the fingers show the direction of the current. As it, as it wraps around, and the north poles have got to oppose each other. Okay? Okay, so from a conservation of energy point of view, 
we know that Lenz's law says it repels the magnet and forces you to do the work. As you're pushing this thing in, you have to put more force oops, to overcome the polarity of these magnets. If you didn't do that, you would get this current reduced down here in the solenoid for no effort at all. And that's where the law of conservation of energy comes in. The total energy of the system's got to remain constant. Energy is not created or destroyed. It's transformed from one form to another. It is your force that you put on this magnet that generates the field here to generate the current. So if we come back to these examples here, we'll do a little bit of revision on some stuff we spoke about last lesson in 8.2. We had in scenarios like this one here, where we had the wire moving through a magnetic field. We can see the field runs that way. I can't draw very well. Let's try that again. The field's going that way from north to south. We have the motion of the wire that way. Recall our hand rule to do this. There are a number of ways of doing it. But in this scenario, we can work out which way the induced current's going from our hand rules. Now, there's the uh, one on the left here where you put, poke out your three fingers and we think about FBI as in force, magnetic field, current. Or there is the palm rule as in your outstretched palm hand rule that Homer's showing us here, which shows us the same thing. Now, in this case, we're talking about induced currents. So I've sort of written the FBI like this. But let's think about an easier way to deal with this. So there's literally one hand rule for most, for almost all the examples we've discussed this chapter. And that's this one. If we think of the thumb as the thing that's actually moving. So whatever is moving is this one here on your thumb. The magnetic field is always your fingers. What you result with is the palm pushing that way. It's the resulting force, okay, coming from wherever your palm's pushing. So if you've got a current, as we looked at last chapter, the current flows that way. What is the force on the wire? The direction that your palm's pushing. If you've got some sort of velocity or force as in the, the wires moving a particular direction then that's the direction of the induced current when my pen works that one there I'm referring to let's look at an example here here we have a magnetic field in that direction so if we think of the hand rule you've got your four fingers pointing down the screen there. What we have is a motion of the wire that direction. So your thumbs pointing that way. And what I've actually drawn there, so that's your your, your velocity or your motion that, that direction. Think of that as like your force. This is your magnetic field. And that's almost like that is the, the back of your hand there and the palm is the other side there that you can't see and that would be the direction of the induced current so in that direction is i your induced current that's positive current because this rule always works with positive current so positive charges that end negative charges that end obviously the positive current doesn't move that way what's actually happening is the electrons move that way which makes that one positive Okay, in this scenario now, we have a, this one's a little bit harder to visualize because our magnetic field goes into the page. So it's almost like you've got to get your fingers and push them into the page, into the screen there. We have our velocity moving down that way. So think about your hand rule that we just spoke about and see if you can visualize what's going on here. It's like you have. Um, Four fingers pointing into the screen, so they are pointing straight away away from you into the screen. There's your velocity there. There's your hand. So in this scenario, if that hand's standing upright, what you would notice is that the current would go that way. 
And that's what that shows us. There's your positive current that side, hence that one's negative. Slightly different scenario here. We have our magnetic field going that way from north to south. We have this bit of the wire here going that way. So as in that's the motion that you actually have. So if we draw our um, hand rule, we have four fingers. The motion is pointing down. So we have our B field going that way, the velocity going down that way. And if you're using your right hand, then this bit here is the induced current. So what that means is this will be coming out of the screen at you. Have a think about what I've drawn with that image there. It's a bit hard to draw a two-dimensional hand on the, on the screen there when we're talking about a three-dimensional field. But we end up with this is the current going that way. Okay, The current on this side of the wire flows that way. But because this wire is going the opposite direction, your hand turns around. Hence, the current goes that way. This example is the same as the last one. Magnetic field's going that way. The wire's cutting across us. Velocity's heading down that way. So if we draw a hand, we have, there's our magnetic field. There's our velocity. That's a terribly drawn hand, isn't it? So the velocity's going down that way. The magnetic field's going that way. If you're using your right hand, this is your palm here. Hence, this will come out of the page at you. The positive current will come out at you. So that would mean that conventional current or positive current goes that way, and the negative charge ends up at the other end. All right, remember in this scenario that the um, dots mean the field's coming out of the page at you. So if you take your right hand and point your fingers up out of the screen. That's what you need to be doing. If you turn your right hand so the palm is facing that way, so your thumb faces that way, because that is the direction of motion of the wire, that tells us that if your palm's going that way, then that's the way the current's going to be flowing, that direction. Visualize the hand rule as you do it as we go through these. Right, in this scenario, will a current flow? Now, it's important to remember that what we have here is the velocity in that direction. The magnetic field is going into the page. And you have this section of wire and this section of wire flowing, sort of moving across the field, but they're opposite to each other. And this section of wire and this section of wire are opposite to each other. So if we think about just the um, left hand side here, just this one over here, visualize your hand rule. You've got the magnetic field going into the page, so point your fingers into the page or into the screen. You have your velocity going of that wire going that way, so point your thumb that way. And what that tells us is that the current, the uh, conventional current, should flow in that direction. Okay? But if we look at the other side, this one over here, we have the same scenario. Field goes into the page, the motion's that direction, so that tells us that the current will be flowing that way as well. These two can't flow opposite to each other in the same bit of wire, so they're going to cancel out. So the question, will a current flow? No, it will not. Now, if it's rotating on here, if it's rotating on the page, that changes things a little bit, okay? Because it's moving around a magnetic field, much like our um, electric motor example. Will a current flow in that situation? Yes, it will. And I challenge you to use your hand rule and think about how it's working. Because this particular wire at this point is moving out of the page, and at this point it's moving into the page, okay? 
have a think about that and how it's moving with respect to the magnetic field to work out how the current's flowing. Another example here, we've got the uh, magnetic field with the dots, so it's coming out of the page. The wire's moving to the right at a velocity of 5 meters per second. Use your hand rule, your fingers are pointing up out of the screen, which means your, your palm is facing you and your thumb's pointing to the right. Your thumb's pointing to the right because your velocity is that way. So make sure your thumb points to the right, your palm points towards you, which tells you that the positive current should be going that way. Another scenario here with the same sort of thing happening. Think about how we got that little answer there. Field's going into the page, so your fingers point into the screen. The wire's moving that way, so your thumb points to the right, which means that your palm must be facing that way. That's the direction of positive current. In that scenario there, will the current flow? No, it won't, because it's traveling parallel to the field. It's traveling with the field. It's kind of like the example C there. Um, so, uh, if the wire is cutting across the field, that's one thing. If it's sort of going with the field, like this one here, it's not going to induce a current. Okay, this wire here is moving with the field, it's not going to make a current. Moving with the field is not going to make a current. And same with the first one there. So, back to our lenses law stuff and our solenoids. In this scenario here, we have the magnet uh, moving around the solenoid. So, this conductor here is our solenoid, and these circles represent the, the wires of the solenoid. So, let's have a look at what's going on here. If the magnet's moving out, the uh, solenoid is going to set up a magnetic field to oppose it, all right? And as the magnet moves that way out of the solenoid, it's like this north and south are going to be attracted to each other. That's why the magnetic field is set up with the south at the top and the north at the bottom. So then we need to work out, well, which way does the current have to flow in the solenoid to make sure that that's the way the field's set up. And it'll be like that. And what we're back to now is our um, hand rules where the, the one where you curl your fingers around for a solenoid so it's like I want the north that's my thumb down that way so I have my fingers like that like that one I want my uh, current to flow around that way to make sure the north there and the south there And in the bottom one, you can see that the only thing we've changed is that this magnet has been turned around, so north there and south there. So you think, which way am I going to set up the field in my um, solenoid? It's got to be the opposite way around. So there is an attraction here between the north and the south, which means the current's going to go the other way. Visualize those handles and see if you can work it out. Okay, this scenario here is back to the uh, earlier examples. We have our, our magnetic field in that direction. We have our velocity in that direction. Which way is our current going to flow in the wire in that scenario? It's going to go into the page. How do we know that? Because it's like we have our um, hand rule with our fingers pointing down. So there's our fingers. There's the motion of the wire. So that's a B field, that's the, the, the velocity of the wire that way. And this um, surface that we're looking at here is the back of the hand and the palm is on the other side, pointing into the screen, hence it goes that way. Look at the next example. There's our magnetic field that way, that's the way your fingers point. There's the velocity, so that's B, that's the velocity. <coughs> So your thumb's going to point down, your palm should be pointing out towards you, 
hence the field comes out of the page. And C is just another example of our motors, where they are the electric motor, where we have the same sort of scenario. We have our field going that way in that scenario. We have the velocity going that way in that wire. So you use your hand rule. You've got your fingers pointing to the left of the screen in the direction of the field. You've got your thumb pointing down in the direction of the velocity. Your palm is facing away from you towards the page. Hence the current goes into the page. The other wire is doing the opposite thing because the velocity is going up. Hence your hand turns around and your palm's facing you so the current comes out of the page at you. Okay, these scenarios here. We have in part A there, we have the uh, north-south of the magnet there. So the solenoid's going to set up uh, a magnetic field to oppose that. We would oppose that by having a north here and a south here because the two um, poles next to each other are going to attract each other. So we're back to our curled around hand rule, so the one that I spoke about at the start of the, um, the lesson. We want the north pole of the magnet, of the solenoid, sorry, there. Hence, which way does our current have to flow in order to do that? It's got to go that way. Think about curling your fingers around and the fingers going in the direction of those those arrows that just appeared. With part B, same scenario. We have our south pole there, the magnet's going in. So we're going to want to oppose its motion. So we want a south pole there to repel it. North's got to be there. And that's the way our field's got to go. Think about your hand rule. Curl your fingers around. Point your thumb towards that. And which way are your fingers pointing? We're coming out of the page there, around the solenoid, and into the page there. In part C, have a look at that. You may want to pause the video and work out which way the field's going to be set up and which way the current's got to flow. The magnet's going in, in that direction, hence we want a north pole there to oppose this north pole here, hence that's going to be south. Use your hand rule, and it's got to come out of the top side there and into the bottom side there. It's probably a good time to have a break because we've been talking for a bit, so you may like to pause the video and look at our nice little um, quotes there, and you can scratch your head like... Uh, I'll make down the bottom here. Okay, so let's go back and just revise this one. How can we recall, can you recall how we determine the electric field around a current carrying wire? <clears throat> and it's that rule that's shown on the screen there. We have the current flowing in the wire. A magnetic field will be set up around that, um, that, uh, that wire. Let's look at an example, and I've taken this screenshot from the Khan Academy videos on this topic, where we've got a um, coil of wire, which is represented by our orange line there, and we have a magnetic field, which is the flux lines are represented by the blue arrows. And the question becomes, what happens when the size of that magnetic field increases? And you can see it gets bigger there. And we've got two options that are shown on the screen there. The current can either flow that way in the wire or it will induce a current to flow that way in the wire. But what we want to do is keep our conservation of energy the same. So how do we look at that? In the bottom example down here, here's our hand rule where I've got my fingers coiled around. Where the um, In this scenario, we've got that representing the current. And this uh, the fingers here representing a coiled around magnetic field. So if, you, if, if this hand overlaid the wire at this point, the fingers at this point are pointing up. So what would happen if the size of this field increases, if the current flowed that way, it would generate a magnetic field that way, which would generate a bigger magnetic field, which would generate more current flowing that way, which would generate more magnetic field, which would generate a bigger magnetic field. And you can see this is just an infinite feedback loop. 
which is obviously not possible. So that's not really going to happen. If your this hand here is turned around to this one here, if the current flows in that direction, the magnetic field at this point inside the wire is pointing down like that which will oppose this increased magnetic field. So what Lenz's law is showing us in this scenario, if we sort of, this is the idea of revise and connect and extend. We're not talking about moving a magnet or anything. We're talking about increasing the size of this magnetic field. What will it do to current in this wire? If this increases, then the current must flow in this direction here. It must flow that way and that way in the wire because what will that will then do is generate a magnetic field in the opposite direction of the magnetic field shown. And what that means is it generates this magnetic field to oppose this increased magnetic field. And that's the conservation of energy part. So let's look at that example a bit differently. And here's one from the book. We're going to induce uh, a voltage or an electromotive force by changing the field strength. So in this example here, so we have our field going into the page, right there, let me change my colour again, going into the page there, we have a coil of wire, uh, what is effectively a coil of wire here, encompassed by this bit here. Now what's happening is the, um, the magnetic field will change to zero in five milliseconds. So at the moment it's 0.2 Tesla pointing into the page and it's going to become zero in five milliseconds. So what you've got to ask yourself is what will happen? You can calculate the direction of uh, the, the force, which way the current's going. You can calculate the actual voltage and which way the current's going. And we can determine which way the current is going to go. But what we've got to think is, is essentially this thing wants to maintain everything the way it is. That's the conservation of energy part. So if this field pointing into the page will return to zero, what this system is going to do, this coil of wire is going to do, is it's going to want to maintain that field going that way. So we need the um, field to be going that way. Think about your little um, hand drill. It's a little bit hard for me to draw because I'm not an artist. So there's your fingers curling around that way. And what that means is the, the magnetic field at that point of the wire will go to the down or into the page, which means the current's going that way. Let's show what I mean. Over on the left here is our formula from the last section. EMF is negative N delta B A over delta T. That's the formula there. We have all our dimensions for those things. So you can go back and use that formula because we have all of the stuff written here. All right. We can work out that there's going to be 1.6 volts of induced current by making this field zero in five milliseconds. But what's actually going to happen to that? Which way is this current going to flow? And that's what this little um, box at the top here tells us. The current will flow to maintain the magnetic field, keep things the same. The field strength, which is B, is decreasing, so the loop wants to oppose this and keep the field strength the same. It does this by generating a field in the same direction as the original field to make up for losses. So that means if this field here is decreasing, is we're going to want to generate a field. So that cross that I did just there is what the loop of wire is going to generate just because the field's decreasing. I know that sounds weird, but just because this magnetic field's decreasing, we're going to generate this field into the page. And think about a hand rule. But this means our current's going to want to travel clockwise. We're going to generate a field to uh, maintain that field, which means the current has to go that way. And I'm always talking about positive current. I'm not talking about electron flow. The current's got to go that way in order to maintain that field. Think about your hand rule and see if you can visualize how that occurs. All right, this scenario here, we're looking slightly differently. The um, magnetic field is staying constant, but what's happening here is the rod 
is moving sideways to the right at 5 metres per second. We can calculate EMF, it's the same formula, and we can direct, determine the direction of the current. I think you just have a pause and just rewind and write down that formula down again if you need to, and see if you can work it out before we actually go through the actual solution. So, over here we've got our formula, plug the numbers in. We know that there is one turn because it is literally one loop of wire. We know the magnetic field because it told us over here, 0.2 Tesla. We know the area because you know it's 0.2 meters. So you can work out the area of the coil. And it told us it's moving in one second. It's moving um, across to the side. You can plug all that in, work out what's going on there. Now, what happens to the actual current? So when this rod moves across, right, the amount of flux that's inside that loop, the magnetic field inside that loop will increase. So what we've effectively done is increased the size of this, purely because we are encompassing more flux lines in a larger loop. So if this field is effectively increasing inside the loop, we are going to want to oppose that. So we're going to generate a, a, um, a field that opposes that. So it's going to want to generate a field that comes out of the page at this point. Think about your hand loop. The current will travel anti-clockwise. So there will be an induced current anti-clockwise because that, if you use your hand rule, will generate a field coming out of the page at this point, which will oppose the fact that we now have more flux inside the loop. Have a look at some of those um, little uh, videos that I've got written there. See if you can have a look at those, some more demos and so on. And you're probably feeling a little bit like uh, this guy here by good old physics at the moment. That's okay, that's normal. So let's check our understanding. Which of the following demonstrates Lenz's law? Now remember, the scenario I gave you right back at the start was running a magnet down a pipe, a pipe that wasn't magnetic. So can't be number one because there's no magnet involved. We need a magnet moving within some sort of uh, loop of wire. And the pipe in that scenario represents a loop of wire. Think of the pipe as one big long wire. Like you can almost extend it out in that direction to make it into a pipe. So what we want to do is run it down a um, pipe that is not uh, magnetic in any way. If you stick a magnet in a steel pipe, what's it going to do? It's going to stick to the side. If you run it down a plastic pipe, there is no mag uh, no um, free electrons like in a metallic pipe, so it's not going to work. So neither of those two work. So we want to run it down a copper pipe. Here's a little challenge question for you to think ahead about. What do we notice about the orientation of the magnetic fields when compared to the electric fields? When they do those hand rules, the magnetic field and the current produced, so the current is your electrical field, what do we notice about their orientations? And if we think back to Unit 2 work when we talked about um, waves, what sort of wave had these characteristics? What we notice about these is they are always at right angles to each other. What wave had an electrical field and a magnetic field at right angles to each other? That was a light wave. So hence you can create, and when I say light wave, I mean an electromagnetic wave. So we have a magnetic field and electrical field that are right angles to each other. Let's see if we can go through a bit of a flow chart to summarize this. Electromagnetic waves had this property and we showed them with this sort of diagram here. So if we create an oscillating magnetic and electrical field at the same time, what we have created is electromagnetic radiation which is a form of light. So have a look at, uh, check your learning 8.3, see if you can have a look at the next section. Won't have to think about this one a few more times, but uh, you can see we've done three of our formulae. We've got a couple more to go in the last two sections. Okay, thank you for coming.